everybody and very good afternoon from Manipal Hospital, Dwarka. Today we are here to cater about the topic of 60 years and going strong. And I have Dr. Yashika Padeso, Dr. Gaurav Rastogi and Dr. Akya from different specialities of OBG gynae, orthopedics and physiotherapy. As of now, I'll be introducing Dr. Yashika Padeso, who is the HD of Obstetrics and Gynecology Department. Hello, ma'am. Hello, Ms. Akshi. Hi, ma'am. So over to you and we shall just start with the presentation and uh, enlighten the audience about how to take care of them after 60 years and be strong. Okay. Good afternoon everyone. Uh, so we are going to talk on, on a very uh, up topic that is 60 years and going strong. As we know the population here in India beyond 60 is increasing day by day. So we have to really take care of all the people who are above the 60 years of age. So there are a few aspects on which from a doctor's point of view and especially a gynecologist's point of view, uh, what all things you should take care. So that is what I'll uh, try to um, uh, focus on. Next slide. So we all know prevention is better than cure. So the life, first of all, I'd like to tell you that life begins at 60. So the last 59 years have just been a practice. We all know that we have learned a lot and now we have to start our life because we know everything about the life. But still there are some mistakes which we are doing uh, like many of the people above the age of 40 who should go for health checks are not going for health checks. So I would request yearly checkups after the age of 40 is required and as your doctor's discretion if she wants you to come a little early or wants you to get some investigations done every three years like uh, cervical cancer screening is to be done every three years not to be done yearly so your doctor will advise we also know that we should all do, do walks yoga exercise to strengthen our bones our muscles and to get fresh air so please continue doing who are doing and who are not doing please start it don't postpone it for tomorrow start it from today though we know that during covid you are not able to do it for, but still in many societies they have started allowing it so you can take a walk with full, full, full precautions of masks and uh, sanitization then you should take your medic medications if somebody has diabetes somebody has sugar she has, somebody has bp somebody has lip, uh, cholesterol so they should take their medicines in time the problem which at the age of 60 people face is that they are not able to, they are forgetting the time of the medicine. They don't know how to maintain their charts and uh, when to approach a doctor. First of all, you should, uh, what my advice will be, you should have some boxes kept ready. If there are some young people at home, they should help their elderly. They should make some boxes for morning, evening and night and put the medicines there so that they take it in time. They should not delay their medicines because somebody who is hypertensive, if they miss their medicine, they can have a high BP. So the same way and somebody at house who is there, even the grandchildren remind their grandparents if they are forgetful your medicine is due especially people who are on insulin their medications should not be missed they should take good sleep uh, this actually is a little funny to say because most of the people in old age uh, start sleeping very less or they have a little problem in initiation of sleep or maybe they have lots of interruptions in their sleep because of urination, because of stress, or because of many other reasons with age, usually the sleep pattern disrupts and the sleep requirement also decreases a lot. But if you have a healthy abdomen, healthy bowel system, and you are exercising, and you do, uh, then there is no problem in sleep. So first of all, you should have a good bowel movement and your sleep is not disrupted. And tire yourself a little bit, do some type of, type of exercise, then you will have a good sleep. Healthy diet, we all know what is healthy diet and what we should eat, fruits, everything. Carbohydrates should be decreased, proteins should be increased our diet. Proteins is important for everyone, young children, pregnant ladies and the elderly. So these three age groups, they should always take a lot of proteins in their diet. So please do it so that you will not get sick. We are talking about prevention here. So please start taking the proteins, any disease you have. If you have not taken care of it for you know that you have a little um, heart problem or you have some problem in your leg in your knees you have maybe a little bit of osteoarthritis but you are still not going to the doctor because you are scared if you will go that she will detect some other disease with you so please don't do that get yourself treated because once the disease spreads a lot and damages the organs then that the treatment becomes a little complicated 
so if treated early you can get treatment with exercise also you can get cured with minimal medications you can get cured. if somebody has some sexual dysfunction at this age usually patients suffer from some or the other you can always approach the doctor people are usually very ashamed of talking about such things sometimes the female partner doesn't is not interested sometimes the male partner is not interested but if both the partners have a little bit of interest they should talk to their doctor and solve those problems they should if somebody is drinking smoking and some addiction they have they should uh, decrease it so because it's not the age when you should be continuing with those addictions and my request to most of the people because uh, i even i have parents who don't have insurance so i would tell all my elderly people and their children if they have insurance in their offices they should take insurance for their parents i have taken my insurance for my parents also so take health insurance as early as possible children who are young and joint jobs they should ask their parents to take insurance give their parents insurance so that whenever they are sick in future they don't have lots of problems why we need to take care at 60 why are we talking about this topic right now why was it not needed earlier because we all know the quality of life has improved so much though we talk about a lot of pollution and we talk about so many diseases coming up but we still know the quality of life the like life expectancy in our country has increased we have seen our grandparents and many other people elderly they are uh, they used to die at 40 and 50 but now right now even at 60 and 80 they are still there with us and we are taking good care of them and they are healthy and we expect them to stay with us for a long time so we sh- because of the expectancy increases increasing we take care of our elderly and we should take care of our health health it's not that after 40 50 or 60 we are bedridden we should ta- at least have that much of capacity to take care of ourselves very well so and we want and everybody who is elderly whose children are out of india or who are children are settled somewhere else they are staying alone they have to take care all the needs of the family the uh, the marketing the shopping the home needs and all the care everything has to be done by this couple only so they have to be healthy and active if they are not how will they manage so if one partner is sick at least the other partner should be healthy so that uh, they can take care so they should prevent the falls they should take care of their partner be updated to the technology this is also a very important thing which i want all elderly to know uh, because if i i have faced this problem like my parents they never wanted to change their phone they never wanted to upgrade their phones but nowadays you know everything is there you have online banking going to the bank at times can be difficult for elderly so these things are very safe if you have learned them properly so learn from your children and children who are listening to it should teach their children parents so that they don't have this problem and uh, yeah old elderly should be very enthusiastic to learn it they should not say it is think that it is a burden so this is a chart which is just to show you ki how um, at the age at the after the 40 age you see how our bones start deteriorating in this slide you can see there is rapid loss menopause after menopause and this slide is showing before menopause also we have this uh, um, uh, chart with us so this is showing that even before menopause after the age of 40 our uh, bones start deteriorating a little bit and after 40 it is a sharp decline and so we should take care and after menopause especially it is a very sharp decline so please take care of your bones after the age of 40 perimenopausal also so people start suffering few problems like mood swings cramps weight gain nausea irritability so you should meet your doctor and talk to her and some yesterday only i i met a patient who was almost a case of premature menopause but she has been treated for a long time last 2 3 years taking some medications having her periods and then again going back to no periods but nobody had yet investigated her and confirmed her diagnosis because if somebody has a post premature menopause they should get treated otherwise what will happen mid premature menopause is having a uh, menopause at a very early age that is less than 40 so what will happen her bones will start getting weaker before that age so what you should do is you should meet your doctor and take hormonal therapy you should not avoid it hormonal therapy is for your good and not for your bad it might be bad for some patients that your doctor will decide whether you should not take hormonal therapy or you should take because there are lots of benefits with hormonal therapy then after the age of 45 when you are about to menopause the time is coming near 
when you are about to finish with your periods that is the time that hot flushes start coming people usually complain that there are a lot of sweating and they feel very heated up especially in the night time and then they get up the whole body is full with sweat so this is a sign that you are having hot flushes they might have tachycardia ghabrahat and um, don't feel like eating anything so those things do happen and there is treatment for that few people have dryness and then after the age of 55 60 which we are talking is the osteoporosis stage which comes so and because the osteoclastic activity starts because dr uh, gaurav and afia will be taking care of the bone part so i'll not be talking in detail about that <clears throat> so i just uh, wanted to show you all this picture you can see this first picture of the diet so this is what you have to take after the age of 40 all females especially males also have to take a lot of care of their bone health but especially the females they should take at least four to five six servings of milk products but it is not possible so at least two glasses of milk two katoris of curd you and everybody you every day you cannot take you can take lassi you can take cheese you can take paneer na you can take um, uh, chia seeds and lots of broccoli and all those these have folic acid mushrooms and then you have almonds so please and those who are non vegetarian they should take with fishes because it have omega 3 people who are vegetarian they should take uh, super added omega 3 and some dha products which are vegetarian are also come out in the market vitamin d is very important because bone health cannot be prevented just with calcium we we need vitamin d and phosphates also for that so if required they should you should be given and your doctor will also prescribe magnesium is also deficient in most of our patients multivitamin is deficient in most of our patients and the care of this you can see this picture of how the bones start becoming porous porous is like a sponge so how dense the bone was the calcium starts deteriorating and becomes porous so what will happen if you have porous bone nothing will happen you will fall you will have a fracture and otherwise if you fall what will happen you will not have a fracture you might just have a pain for some time and you will be okay but if you have a very porous bone especially females they have lots of hip fractures and wrist fractures which is the most in the more maximum area where the bone density weakens and then the skin everybody is working everybody is going to the office everybody wants to look young so skin care is also very important in the post menopausal menopausal age group after the age of 60 so the treatment modalities hormone replacement therapy only after discussing with your doctor getting yourself investigated then we have management of urinary and rectal incontinence if we talk about urinary and rectal incontinence in, in india so it's the most underrated disease may, none of my patients will come to me with i will not say none few of them very few of them will come with this problem ki ma'am i have <coughs> my urine leaks out or my motion leaks out but this is so common in most of our patients if i ask them a direct question ki do you have this problem they say yes they have this problem people have stop being sexually active people stop going to social uh, meetings gatherings because they are ashamed that they may have a urinary leak they may have a rectal incontinence they might have lot of gas passing which is which will be uncomfortable but they never talk to the doctor and there are so many even in physiotherapy with kegels and lots of other methods even in yoga kapal bharti and many other diseases you can just cure a lot of a large part of urinary and rectal incontinence every person is not there needing a surgery only a very large small group will need a surgery so you should go to your doctor there might be some some people have constipation so that is also leading to rectal incontinence and the passing of lot of gas and because of that pressure the vaginal area and the urinary area is prolapsing so if they be solve that problem also a lot of it improves because as we said as the av start aging after 60 our muscle mass decreases because of less of protein in there we are not exercise and the muscles of the pelvic area also start losing their strength so if we keep on exercising in that area like we we exercise for our body parts but we are not exercising in that there might be a lady who is going to the gym regularly she is exercising all other body parts but maybe she is not exercising her muscles of the pelvic area so she will might have urinary incontinence when she is lifting weights so we have to teach her ki you should do this and that will treat her so the pelvic floor dysfunction is there then we have cancer prevention and treatments for cervical breast ovarian and uterine this is i am talking about the <coughs> female part in male we have prostate cancer which is there at the later age which is also has to be taken care though lung cancer may mostly stays a very common cancer in uh, the females also but cervical breast ovarian and uterine needs to be treated breast and cervical they have screening methods we ca can prevent ourselves from these two diseases ovarian and uterine 
I don't have a screening method. Uterine usually patients present with some or the other bleeding irregularity. In ovarian, which is can be silent, but lot of ovarian screening tests, uh, diagnosis, and uh, technology advancements are taking place. Maybe in future we will have have something. But still now there is nothing, no diagnostic test for ovarian cancer. Then we have palliative care for people who are actually very sick and cannot be given any surgical modality. So at home therapy, just pain management therapy is there for them. Osteoarthritis, we know lots of our old elderly people have knee joint problems. They are not able to walk properly with physiotherapy, with exercise. At least they can walk. Maybe they will not be running, but they will be walking. So please treat it at the earliest. We have osteoporosis, osteopenia. So bone densitometry needs to be done to know whether our bones are really very weak. Because after the age of 60, uh, Dr. Gaurav will I think enlighten you on that. Phosphates decreases. So patients should be very sure about that. They are taking phosphates and uh, they are given phosphates by their doctors. And some patients might need injectable for also. Some patients might not need injectable. So that has to be decided depending on your bone density and your levels. And there are few patients I have come across, they have been taking phosphates for a very long time without stopping. And in that case, the bones become brittle and if they fall, they will have a fracture. So please, uh, on your own, don't take. Many patients come to us that we should not take calcium, that will cause stone. But they are not, they are taking phosphate, they are taking other things and they are, don't know what they should do. But they are afraid of calcium. What I feel is calcium uh, tablets, usually you take one tablet. It is not even always 1000 milligrams. So even if you are taking one calcium tablet of 500 milligrams, it is not going to cause cal uh, stones in your body. So please, I think this is a myth that people think that if your doctor has specifically advised you, your urologist not to take it, then you stop taking it. Otherwise, I think none of these patients should, should worry about the stone. In the age of, after the age of 60, the mental health also is very important. People might start having dementia, Alzheimer's. These are the diseases in which people are going for walks. I am also very scared at times that my father might go for a walk and uh, he might forget his way. But right now he's healthy, so I'm not worried. But there might be coming a time that this might happen. So if we treat it at the earliest, we do exercises and we meet our neurologist and take medications and uh, multivitamins. So this can be delayed. Maybe we cannot uh, totally remove it from our life, but it might happen not at 60, maybe at 80. But if it happens at 60, we can try to avoid it by taking medication in time. Then cosmetic care, as we talked about, that's required. Some people, some females always want to look good. Some males also want to look good. So they should always go for cosmetic care. What is the major causes of death in this age group? Heart disease is the most important. Because in female, till they have not attained the menopause, their heart is the most healthy and healthier than the males. But as soon as they menopause, their heart function starts decreasing and they should really take care, good care of their heart and they should have regular checkups. And many females have little bit arrhythmias which might need treatment because ghabra heart and missed beats are very common in them. So meet a cardiologist and scan you that you don't have any other super added disease. Then we have cancers, which is very common cause of death. Cancer is a cause of death only when not detected in time. That is what I believe. So please don't, most of my patients say, I don't want to go to the doctor because something or else will come because they will write a test and I'll do a test and some disease will come. But they are not forgetting it that if the disease is detected late, then treatment modality will be difficult. Then the other thing is stroke. Then we have COPD. Chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, lots of people have uh, pulmonary diseases. Though in females, the disease will be a little less because uh, they are less smoking, but uh, lots of females are smoking these days. We never know when they are 60, they might have these diseases, but at present, males are more prone to these diseases. Then we have pneumonia, influenza, diabetes, and lots of patients die because of accidents also. Like I will say, even the hip fracture can cause the death of a patient because of um, fat embolism, lot of blood loss, and uh, septicemia if not treated because at this age many times the patients the old people are not very uh, receptive to any uh, directions what the children say the doctors say they are very adamant to what they want so they should i think listen because the technology has advanced so much they should listen to their children listen to the doctors and let them treat them
we'll just uh, talk a little bit of the male partner because uh, i think dr charu is not there with us who would have uh, highlighted a little more on the problems in the males um the i will say that prostate care is very important in males and the rest of the problems are almost similar as in males or in females after the age of 60 and uh, all medication medical complications should be treated they should also exercise and walk and um, psychological health is very important and sexual health also is very important for the male part so checkups and care so eye checkup hear che hearing checkup dementia and depression they should also be checked if we have a suspicion that we are very forgetful it's very common to forget uh, in old age when we have lots of work to do or because of old age little bit of dementia can be normal but if it's increasing and needs treatment you should meet the doctor and nutrition you should be very careful if you have still have doubts always meet a dietitian or go to blogs go to internet go to facebook ask somebody dietitian in your home ki what is best for you treat your vitamin deficiencies calcium deficiencies vitamin d deficiencies take multivitamins proteins isoflavones is very important isoflavones are natural estrogen so all my females i usually tell them to take we have calcium with isoflavones which which i prefer to give to my patients because then they don't have to take it separately also at times because people usually don't take and we have this myth of not taking soya bean in our country everybody say most of the people are hypothyroid they say if you are treated a little bit of soya bean in your diet or twice or thrice in a week will not cause you any problem so soya bean is the richest pro, uh, source of protein in a vegetarian diet and most of our people are avoiding it so i would suggest and i would prefer all of you to take a little we have soya milk we have soya badi we have soya uh, dal we have there and we have tofu with us so many sources of soya are there you can always take them and increase the natural estrogen in your body and phosphates and vaccination please all of you please take vaccination for all the diseases which i have mentioned pneumococcal influenza boostrix hepatitis a typhoid hepatitis b so pneumococcal influenza and boostrix if taken will prevent you from lot of diseases if you get sick and if you are will be prevented lung infections will be prevented and footwear is very important for our old age footwear and foot care podiatry is increasing a lot in our country maybe in time it will have another department with us you should have a very good footwear you should not footwear ka main main thing which we have to uh, focus on footwear is they should not fall falling leads to fractures and lots of problems in elder so please be very careful talk to your doctor if you don't have an idea and all medications should be taken in time as i said and they should take the help of the family members if they think they are forgetting the medicines <coughs> thanks everyone so we will take the questions after dr gaurav and afia has completed the talk so i'll like to invite dr gaurav is the consultant in orthopedics at manipal hospital and he will be possible of all our uh, female patients after the age of 60 and the male patients so because in males i don't think they have a lot of problem it's only the females who have to take a lot of care of their bone health continue, continue. uh hi everybody uh, first and foremost i should thank dr yashika godesel for such a nice introduction uh, me i am uh, dr gaurav sogi i am an orthopedic surgeon working in manipal hospital swarka and why this talk is important because the most common problems people more than 60 years old have are musculoskeletal that is the bone and joint pains right that is the most common reason why uh, people more than 60 year old enter or visit the hospital so coming to bone health the bone health is really important reason being fracture is something which are responsible uh, for a lot of morbidity now uh, that is rather the number one cause of morbidity amongst people who are more than 60 years old now the current definition is changing we no longer call people more than 60 year old as elderly right they we simply call them as more mature right now bone health has six components in people who are more than 60 year old number one is exercise which is the most important thing which all of you have to do now i will elaborate further what kind of exercise you need to do and further details would uh, be discussed by our senior physiotherapist dr afia second we are going to talk about osteoporosis osteoporosis is i am pretty sure that's not a new word for you it simply means soft bones and it is inevitable it happens with everybody a third thing which is very commonly asked to me in my clinic says nutrition what should i eat what should i not eat 
then vitamins vitamins are were one of the most ignored topics recently but over the past 10 years they their prominence has increased and now everybody is well versed vitamin specially vitamin d fall prevention is something which dr yashika has already talked about and uh, also dr uh, afia will be having a word about it and the last and uh, actually the most important is think strong right a sound body uh, for, for a sound body a sound mind is important right if you are thinking strong nothing will happen to you right and i'll also elaborate on why thinking strong is important so coming to exercises now all the people more than 60 year old both men and women they need to do moderate level exercises now the question is that how do i know whether the exercise i'm doing is a moderate level exercise or just severe intense exercise now the simple dictum is that if you can talk while doing the exercise then you are performing moderate level exercise like simply walking right you simply walk for say 20 minutes in a day right while walking you can easily have conversation now that's a moderate level exercise for you group exercises are better uh, for elderly uh, for people who are the 6 year old the reason being is that you do have uh, interpersonal communication lot of coordination when you're doing group exercises plus you honestly speaking you enjoy doing those exercises now among the exercises what is important is that you should do 150 minutes of exercise in a week now roughly the cross lays to 20 uh, 15 to 20 minutes of exercise in a day which is actually not much considering the fact that you have 24 hours in a day one thing which you have to avoid is you have to avoid impact exercises now it's no point you going for a run right the moment you hit a treadmill you will surely visit me or one of my orthopedic colleagues because you will end up having knee pain so just avoid impact exercises what is more important for you is stretching now the western world has realize the importance of stretching so we have yoga out there we also have yoga here we are celebrating yoga days so yes you have to stretch right stretch your body that's important for the details about it will be discussed by dr afia nutrition why is nutrition important because it's commonly seen that people who are overweight they have pain in the joints they have pain in the back so yes you have to maintain that ideal weight which is easier said than done right what is important is balanced diet so a diet which is rich in proteins rich in carbohydrates rich in fat plus it also has essential minerals and essential vitamins so a simple indian diet of having roti and dal is actually a balanced diet plus salad of course now in fruits 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 eat a lot of fruits now fruits are easy to digest they have the vitamins they have the minerals but right? also fructose is much well tolerated by the body as compared to sucrose now fructose is a food sugar whereas sucrose is a normal sugar which we eat now as we grow old our body is more comfortable with smaller meals but on a more frequent basis so that instead of eating twice or thrice in a day we should we can eat four times or five times in a day only thing is the portions uh, should be smaller so instead of eating three chapatis right you should be comfortable eating one chapati but you have to eat it around four to five times in a day now avoid binge eating so all those barbecue nation type buffets right that is something which you have to avoid right you have a buffet and then you will definitely have some stomach upset and you will be visiting a doctor so that is something which you have to avoid now vitamins most of the vitamins that is the vitamin b complex vitamin a vitamin e are derived from balanced diet hence the importance of balanced diet however there are two vitamins which are notoriously not derived from diet and they are vitamin d and vitamin b12 and believe me vitamin d deficiency is is way more so it's some study says that 60 to 70 percent normal population is deficient in vitamin d now if you just look at the numbers right 1.3 billion strong country 50 percent of that whoa that's a hoping number now that's vitamin d is again important because that is crucial for bone health normally we require 1000 units a day that's a daily requirement so irrespective of your men your women right you need 1000 units a day uh the main uh, source of vitamin d unfortunately sunlight right and i am pretty sure that not us or many of us are spending 20 30 minutes in a day in sunlight with our neck whole arms and the knee exposed right if you are doing that then you are having your daily requirement of vitamin d and so that is actually encouraged now what is very important which dr yashik also mentioned is annual checkup right these are really important in annual checkup your vitamin d and vitamin b12 should also be assessed now if they are low then you need to be put on supplements right now we're coming to vitamin b12 vitamin b12 is predominantly derived from non vegetarian diet 
In a country like ours, where 60% of population is vegetarian, vitamin B12 deficiency is not far from reality. It is quite commonly seen, and um, if that is less, then supplementation helps. Dr. Afia would be mentioning in her talk that vitamin B12 is also required for balance. So if you are low in vitamin B12, then your balance would go haywire and you become more susceptible to falls. Now, osteoporosis. Osteoporosis is inevitable. Everybody will have osteoporosis, right? For that, you have to understand what happens with our bone density. Now, when we are born, right, from that time till the time we become 30 to 35 years old, the bone density increases gradually, gradually, and then it plateaus and then starts declining after the age of 35 years. We cannot stop the decline, but we can do control the rate of decline. So instead of declining like this, it will decline slowly, slowly, slowly like this. Uh, how do we decrease the rate of decline? Exercise, right? So that is the importance of exercise, moderate level exercise. That's like an investment, right? And your 20 minutes a day is an investment to keep your bones strong and to prevent you from fracture. Now, in women, especially menopause, they contribute to osteoporosis, which has been uh, very uh, nicely elaborated by Dr. Yashika. Again, uh, animal health checkups are important for osteoporosis. So, in animal health checkup, do include bone densitometry assessment. That is DEXA. In case your bone density is less than minus 2.5, that means you are osteoporotic. That means you are higher risk of uh, having a fracture in case you fall, or even in case you trip on a loose piece like carpet. Right. In that case, you have to be on supplements, which your doctor would prescribe you. Now, fall prevention. Now, why, we talk, why are we talking about fall prevention? Again, because fractures are the number one cause of morbidity in this country. Majority of fractures can be prevented. Not everybody have their bones broken in an accident. Right. So, believe me, domestic falls, that is falls in your bathroom, fall from stairs is way more common than accidents and they are very common cause of fractures. So simple things like preventing loose items in the house, like uh, I mean loose carpets, furniture which has been just put haywire in case you have kids in your family, then, then they normally put toys at random places, your grandsons or granddaughters and then you might trip on that and you must fall. So you have to instruct your house helpers or you have to instruct your uh, sons and daughters to take care of that. Eyesight is really important. If you are having refractory errors, if you're not able to see, then you are at higher risk of falling. Again, medicines, certain medicines like uh, for BP, for blood pressure, etc that can cause dizziness and something called orthostatic hypertension. And the moment you stand, you feel dizzy. So you have to, in case this is happening to you, then kindly uh, contact your physician. They might need to alter those medicines. You have to check your hearing also, and because hearing problems are commonly associated with balance problems. Our inner ear not only helps in hearing, it is also the balance center of our body. Now, Quickly talking about miscellaneous things, the do's and don'ts especially. Now, knee is the most common joint affected in aging. Knee osteoarthritis is rather the most common geriatric problem noted. It is even more common than refractory errors. Now, everybody will have problems in the knee as they age. Now, a common question people ask is, which is better, Indian commode or Western commode? Now, for knee specifically, you have to avoid squatting. So, you have to avoid going all the way down. So, Western commode is better. Also, stairs is something which you have to be uh, careful of, right? You have to avoid climbing stairs on a fast basis. You have to climb it on a step-by-step -step basis, right? And again, a very commonly asked question, not related to this, is if uh, knee replacement is required, then when should I get a knee replacement done? Now, the answer is that if you're not able to walk 400 yards, if you're not able to perform your activities on daily living, like changing clothes, wearing socks, taking out socks, and if you are not on daily painkillers, if the pain is bearable and you need not take any painkiller right, on a frequent basis, then probably you can avoid getting a knee replaced. Now, shoulder, diabetes is the number one enemy of shoulder. So if you are diabetic, you have to stretch your shoulder, otherwise your shoulder will become stiff. You have to take care whether your diabetes is controlled or not. In case your diabetes goes haywire, then the number one indication is your shoulder starts hurting. Right. So conversely, if you are diabetic and your shoulder starts hurting, then you also have to visit your diabetologist or endocrinologist to see 
whether your sugars are normal or not. Yeah. Now, again, a very common cause of pain in elderly population is protracted shoulders. These are shoulders which come forward. Now, that is predominantly positional. When you are working on laptop or we are writing something, our shoulders, they have a tendency to come forward. We have to voluntarily retract it. Right? That is very important. You have to bring it back. Okay. So that's some exercise which you have to do. You have to uh, ensure that your pos your position is not going wrong in case you're bending forward, right? Then probably you will end up compressing your spine. So you need to have a proper position. That is very important. Foot. Now, footwears, people ask uh, which footwear is good for me. Should I wear flat? Should I wear heels? Should I wear closed footwear? Should I wear open footwear? But the answer is open footwear is better than closed footwear because it avoids problems associated with sweat. The footwear should not have a narrow box. Now, narrow box means that it should not be narrow, pointed, because otherwise it will crumble upon your toes and you might end up having deformity of your great toe, which you would have seen called as bunion and hallux valgus. But sports shoes should always be preferred. So whenever you're going for your morning walk, please wear sports shoes. You can easily purchase them. If you are, if you need to wear heels, right? If there's a marriage in the house, and of course you cannot attend it in sports shoes. We understand that, especially for all the women out there. Then you have to wear platform heels, right? You should should avoid stilettos. You have more chance of uh, having imbalance on it. You have more chance of falling. And if you fall, you come to me. Now, thinking strong is important because it says that you are old only when you think that you are old. So, if, if you are young in your mind, right, then you will not age. Right? Well, that is not an elixir for youth, but thinking uh, strong is very important. Think that you are a young person. Think that you can do what is what you can do. Now, happy mind releases endorphins and that helps you. Know. If you are under stress, some kind of stress, then your muscles, especially the muscles in the back of the neck, muscles in the lower back, they become tight. And that is a very common cause of pain in the neck and the back. Meditate. That helps. Really helps. Right. One more thing is keep yourself active as much as possible. Try to do your household chores yourself. Right. Try to do the cleaning and the dusting. The more you do it, the better it is. Right. You should cook food for yourself. Just do not be a lazy person sitting on a couch singing that I'm old and everybody will help me. Right? The day you think like that, the day you become old and the day you invite problems. So with that thing, I'll uh, thank everybody for watching this webinar. I hope I was able to convey what I wanted to convey. Now, uh, I'm next in line is Dr. Afia. She's a senior physiotherapist and uh, she will be elaborating more on what I was telling and she'll tell you fantastically what aging is. Bye. Hello everyone. Thank you, Gaurav sir and Dr. Hashika for like enlightening us about the topic 60 years and going strong. First of all, I would like to wish every senior citizen because today is the senior citizen day and we are enlightening you with the, uh, all these 60 years and going strong. And according to me, aging is not at all a disease. It's a natural condition that need to be nurtured and advanced. So basically, I'll be talking about the physiological, the main common problems and what all preventions we can take because we don't have one to one solution for all. We just give you a prevention tips. We can give you some uh, like exercises. We can tell you some like what all changes you can made at home. But every uh, every uh, like person is unique, so they need if they like for any problem they need a proper tailor made exercise protocol. If they have like uh, prior uh, Parkinson disease, any neurological, any musculoskeletal disease, we just brief you about like uh, the problems and the solution but not the that only that is only the solution okay so basically let's talk about like what are the like, normal physiological uh, aging physiology in of aging so first body composition there is all the gradual loss of lean mass usually hum log ne dekha hai bode logo ki juriyan aa jati hain matlab haath latakne lag jate hain to basically muscle mass loss hota hai so everything ek baat hamesha yaad rakhiyega body ka koi bhi ek cheez koi bhi ek part dusre se almost connect rehta hai ek problem hogi to usse connected rahegi 
सो यू नीड टू स्क्रीन आपको अपने आप पे ध्यान देना है कि कहाँ क्या चीज लॉस हुई क्या प्रॉब्लम आ रही है देन विल गो सो इंक्रीज बॉडी कॉम्पोजिशन में हमारा मसल मास एक तरह से लॉस हुआ देन इंक्रीज इन फैट हुआ देन बोन मिनरल लॉस एज एज डॉक्टर गौरव है ऑल्सो टोल यू कि बोन मिनरल्स इसके अंदर रिजॉर्प्शन हमारी ऑफ फॉर्मेशन इन दोनों के बीच में इम्बैलेंस हो जाता है विद एजिंग बिकॉज इट्स अ नेचुरल लाइक फिजियोलॉजी इन आर बॉडी सो यूजली हमारी बोन ऑस्टोपोरोटिक हो जाती है एंड धीरे धीरे इसीलिए अब सिक्सटी अब हम बोलते हैं कि बहुत ज्यादा चांसेस होते हैं फ्रैक्चर्स के सो दिस इज द मेन रीजन दैट वी लॉस आर बोन मिनरल्स देन वी आर ऑल्सो हैविंग मोर फॉल्स बिकॉज ऑफ आर पोस्टरल चेंजेस आर गेट चेंजेस यूजली वॉट हैपन लाइक इन ओल्ड एज और यूजली अब लाइक सिक्सटी ईयर्स ओल्ड Our head thrust increase. Head thrust in the sense we start develop developing this kind of posture. We like we want to sit like this. even if the old people want to hear you, he just move his hands towards you. Then with this there is an extension because our normally we have this curvature of our cervical spine due to this posture. Our head spine get started extending. I mean like straightening of the spine. and with this we have a, like bahut sare log the piche iska ye kamar uth rahi hai hum logo ki with aging hum chalne ke time our posture usually we develop this kind of posture stoop posture usually so we have associated thoracic kyphosis then in response to that we have a like impact on the lower spine that is the uh, straightening of spine and then we matlab usually old age people develop the low back pain chronic mein wo khatam nahi hota kyunki ek cheez ek dusre se connected hai and usually jab bhi aap jaate hain garam se kai mein nahi ha kar lekin problem shayad upar wali spine se shuru hui hai wo hame pata nahi hota then we have a scapular protraction and ulnar deviation of hand and ultimately all these uh, postural leads to our jo central of gravity hoti hai uske andar shift kar deti hai and it leads to normally falls usually aapne dekha hoga bathroom slips common hai just because ki wo ekdam sudden posture change hota hai uh, adapt nahi kar pata cog base of support and then they have a fall or trips we have a skin changes also like moisture content reduce hota hai epidermal renewal reduce ho jata hai elasticity reduce ho jati hai or sensitivity to touch pain and temperature and even the vibratory sense of the old age people reduces so hence they are more susceptible to injuries kyunki bahut bahut sare time unko feel nahi hota usually aap dekhoge diabetic to hamare india mein bahut zyada common hai उनको हम लोग इसीलिए कहते हैं कि फुट केयर हमेशा जूता एक थोड़ा सा साइज बढ़ा लें क्यों क्योंकि उस टाइम पे उनके ये सारी जो टच और पेन इन सब की सेंसिटिविटी कम हो जाती है एंड इट लीड्स टू लाइक कुछ कुछ मतलब प्रॉब्लम्स हो जाते हैं कुछ कहीं कहीं स्कार्स हो जाते हैं जो उन्हें पता ही नहीं चलता है डायबिटिक में स्कार का जैसे ठीक होना काफ़ी टाइम लगाता है तो इसलिए यू नीड टू टेक केयर ऑफ योर एवरी बॉडी पार्ट और टेंशन लेके नहीं करना कि यार ये देखना है वो देखना है क्या नहीं है अगर आप दिन में भी एक एक चीज का ध्यान रखेंगे धीरे धीरे तो सारी चीजें एक लाइन में आती रहेंगी छोटी छोटी चीजों का ध्यान रखें बड़ी चीजें अपने आप जगह पे आ जाएंगी उसके साथ जो गेट बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है यूजुअली वुमेन्स जो है ना उनके पेल्विक का एरिया बड़ा होने की वजह से वेडलिंग टाइप ऑफ गेट में चलती है मतलब लाइक ऐसे जैसे एक टाइप चलते हैं ना वो यूजली बेडली गेट की तरह चलते हैं और उनका जो बेस ऑफ सपोर्ट होता है ना वो नैरो हो जाता है क्योंकि वो बाहर थोड़े से पैर ऐसे तेड़े रख के फिर चलते हैं और इन कॉन्ट्रास्ट जो मैन है उनका क्या होता है छोटे स्टेप लेते हैं और उसी के साथ साथ जो है बेस जो होती है उनकी वाइडर हो जाती है सो so, जब भी आप वॉक करें या आपके इस घर में पेरेंट्स हैं या ग्रैंड पेरेंट्स आप उनको वॉक पर लेके जाएँ आप लोगों को बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है उनको ऑडिटरी क्लू दें लाइक आप दादा दादी या मम्मी पापा आप सही चलें सीधा चलें थोड़ा सा उनका स्टेप्स बनाएं चाहे रोज ज्यादा नहीं चलवाएं बिल्कुल फाइव मिनट्स अगर वॉक कर रहे हैं तो दे शुड वॉक इन अ प्रॉपर वन उनके हाथ भी स्विंग्स हो रहे हैं अगर वो वॉकिंग एड ले रहे हैं तो उसमें भी ये है कि वॉकिंग एड और अपोजिट जो है वो एक साथ रखें एंड देन धीरे धीरे वो मतलब डायग्नो पैटर्न चलता रहे उसके साथ साथ इसमें स्विंग फेस डिक्रीज हो जाता है दैट मीन्स कि एरिया कि हमारा लेग जो है वो डिक्रीज हो जाता है और डबल जो पीरियड सपोर्ट का टाइम होता है वो बहुत बढ़ जाता है 
सो जब ये हमारी बॉडी की फिर इसलिए एनर्जी कॉस्ट ज्यादा होती है और एनर्जी कॉस्ट ज्यादा होती है जल्दी थक भी जाते हैं और हमारा वॉकिंग स्पीड भी उनका हमारी ओल्ड एज पीपल का ज्यादा होता है तो जो भी साथ में हो कभी ये ना कहें दादा दादी जल्दी चलो या मम्मी पापा जल्दी चलो ये एक नॉर्मल हमारी फिजियोलॉजी है सो बेस हम क्या करेक्ट कर सकते हैं वी नीड टू करेक्ट देयर वॉकिंग पैटर्न्स उनको फ्रीली वॉक करने दें उनको थोड़ा सा क्यों करें देखो आप ये थोड़ा गलत चल रहे हैं और ऑलवेज रिमेंबर कि जब भी आप वॉक करेंगे आपका जो हील्स जो है वो पहले टच हो देन टोस देन वी ऑल्सो हैव अ कार्डियो पलमनरी चेंजेस लाइक हमारा कार्डिक रिजर्व डिक्रीज हो जाता है कॉन्ट्रैक्टाइल फंक्शन एंड हार्ट रेट जो होते हैं डिक्रीज हो जाते हैं इसीलिए हमारी रिस्पॉन्स जो होता है एक्सरसाइज के लिए वो भी डिक्रीज हो जाता है यूजअली हम लोग जब भी ओ पी डी में पेशेंट्स देखते हैं ना तो उनके जो मतलब लाइक बच्चे होते हैं या उनके साथ अटेंडेंट होते हैं वो यही काम में कंप्लेन करते हैं ये पहले तो इतना चल लेते थे अब इतनी जल्दी थक जाते हैं सो so, ये एक बहुत जरूरी है हर चीज को एक्सेप्ट करना दैट इज द मेन थिंग वन नीड टू एक्सेप्ट कि हाँ अब ये चेंजेस आएंगे बट ये नहीं कि अगर वो कम चल रहे हैं तो लेट हिम और हर भी कि चलो ठीक है पांच मिनट वॉक कर रहे हैं एटलीस्ट कर तो रहे हैं नॉट आइसोलेटेड बेड रिडन तो नहीं है दैट इज द मेन थिंग कभी भी किसी चीज के लिए अगर खाने में अगर एक एज के बाद हम खाना हम पहले पांच रोटी खाते थे क्योंकि हमारी जो डिमांड थी वो ज्यादा थी तो इसलिए हमें सप्लाई भी अच्छी देनी पड़ी लेकिन अब जो है हम लोग आफ्टर सिक्सटी तो हमारी जो जो फिजिकल डिमांड्स हैं वो भी कम हो जाती है अगर हम अगर दो रोटी खाएं वो भी इनफ है तो उस चीज को सिक्सटी इयर्स के बाद का जो गोल्डन पीरियड होता है उसको पहले वाली एज से कभी भी कंपेयर ना करें हो सकता है कभी कभी पलमनरी फंक्शन कम हो जाते हैं जैसे बताया हमने कि यूजली मेल्स के अंदर सो so, uh, कोई नहीं एक ब्रीदिंग एक्सरसाइजेज आप करें ब्रीदिंग टेक्निक एक नॉर्मल ब्रीदिंग पैटर्न इंप्रूव करें अपनी लंग्स की एक्सपेंशन बढ़ाएं दैट से इतना इसमें टेंशन लेने के लिए थोड़े टाइम सांस खुलता है कोई भी इंसान अगर रोज सीढ़ियाँ नहीं चढ़ रहा और सडनली सीढ़ी चढ़ेगा उसके लिए क्योंकि उसका हार्ट और उसकी लंग्स उतने अडाप्टेड नहीं है तो आपको धीरे धीरे उस चीज़ को अडाप्ट करना पड़ेगा दीज आर द फिजियोलॉजिकल चेंजेस ये हैं ये नेचुरल चेंजेस हैं आप इसको कुछ नहीं कर सकते सो so, क्या है बेसिकली आपको इसके लिए फिक्र नहीं करनी इसकी जो रिस्पॉन्स देना है यू नीड टू फोकस ऑन दैट कि ठीक है फाइव मिनट्स वॉक हो रही है टेन मिनट्स वॉक हो रही है इट्स ओके ब्रीदिंग एक्सरसाइज है टेन मिनट्स वॉक में भी अगर आप एक बार बैठ जाए डीप ब्रीदिंग करें अनुलोम विलोम करें कोई कोई इश्यू नहीं है उसमें देन वी हैव न्यूरोलॉजिकल चेंजेस बिकॉज हमारी जो नर्व uh, uh, जो होती है uh, उसके अंदर भी डिजेनरेशन शुरू हो जाती है यूजअली पीपल हैव टेंडेंसी ऑफ ट्रेमर एट्रॉफी ऑफ इंट्रोशिया जो कहते हैं आपकी खाल लटक रही है हमारी ये सब डिमनिश मसल स्ट्रेंथ यूजअली क्या होता है लोअर लेम की मसल स्ट्रेंथ कम होने लग जाती है क्योंकि वो वेट दे रही जॉइंट्स हैं और हमारी बॉडी का ज़्यादा तो इट हैज टू वर्क और उसके साथ साथ हमारी जो बोन मिनरल्स हैं वो कम हो रहे हैं मसल्स पे स्ट्रेंथ मतलब लोड ज़्यादा आ रहा है तो इसलिए वो थोड़े डिमनिश हो जाते हैं धीरे धीरे आप देखोगे आप सर कभी भी देखना अपने पेरेंट्स में या अपने ग्रैंड पेरेंट्स में अगर आप देखें जो भी अब अब सिक्सटीज के हैं उनकी ना मसल टाइटनेस शुरू हो जाती है क्योंकि घबराहट चलती है कि टोन जो है ना उनका रिस्पांस जो है वो बहुत अलर्ट रहता है ऑल टाइम आप देखोगे उनकी नेक भी जो जैसे अब हमारी जितनी फ्लेक्सीबल है पूरी मूव होगी उनकी नेक भी साइड में भी मूव करने में बहुत प्रेशर लगे क्योंकि धीरे धीरे टोन एक तो है साइकोलॉजिकल स्ट्रेस उसको काम करना पड़ेगा टोन बढ़ रही है उसके साथ धीरे धीरे उनकी फ्लेक्सिबिलिटी एक्सरसाइजेस मतलब जो एक वो और ये भी नहीं कि स्ट्रेंथनिंग फ्लेक्सिबिलिटी सारी एक्सरसाइज एक ही दिन में आप करें कोई नहीं अपना रूटीन बना लें वीक में थ्री डेज ये फ्लेक्स फ्लेक्सीबिलिटी करेंगे थ्री डेज हम स्ट्रेंथ करेंगे एक दिन रेस्ट करेंगे एंड जैसे डॉक्टर गौरव ने भी बताया कि वन मिनट्स पर वीक तो आप कितनी देर मतलब दस से पंद्रह मिनट आपको अपना नॉर्मली उसके अंदर निकाल पाए देन अब मैं आपको सबसे ज़्यादा इम्पॉर्टेंट चीज़ होगी एक्मोडेशन जो भी आपके लिए अपने अगर आपको स्ट्रॉन्ग रहना है ये आपके फिजियोलॉजिकल चेंजेस हैं जो होंगे बॉडी में बट वी नीड टू एकोमोडेट फॉर दीज चेंजेस क्योंकि ये जो इफेक्ट्स होते हैं ना ये इिवर्सिबल होते हैं और इम्पॉर्टेंट ये है कि एजुकेशन ऑफ फैमिली एंड इवन द पेशेंट्स कि दे आर नॉट पेशेंट्स मतलब यूजअली ओल्ड एज पीपल ये एक नेचुरल एजिंग है इसको समझना पड़ेगा ठीक है नहीं खाया जा रहा नहीं चला जा रहा है ओके वी नीड टू एक्मोडेट कि ठीक है अभी मैं अगर 10 20 25 मिनट
क्योंकि हमारी मसल्स जो होती है ना सबसे ज्यादा जिसको कहते हैं ना काम चोर एक वैसी चीज है अगर आप 10 दिन उस मसल को यूज नहीं करेंगे वो अपनी जो पावर स्ट्रेंथ है वो लूज कर देगी सो इट्स बेटर कि कीप इट फंक्शनली एक्टिव जिस फंक्शनली एक्टिव कुछ अभी आपको स्ट्रेस कुछ ऐसा तो नहीं है कि आपको अब रोज जो है इस एज के बाद आपको बहुत हेवी हेवी चीजें उठानी है या कुछ बहुत ज्यादा एक्सेसिव वर्क करना है सो जस्ट मेंटेन अ गुड ऑप्टिमम हेल्थ की फ्लेक्सिबिलिटी भी है और इतनी फंक्शनल स्ट्रेंथ भी है कि मैं अपना ये दिन भर का का काम कर सकता हूँ बिना थके थर्ड थिंग इम्पॉर्टेंट है कि स्ट्रेस भी कम रहना चाहिए और जहाँ पे इम्पेयरमेंट मस्कुल्स का लिटल प्रॉब्लम्स आए तो ऑलवेज सीक आउट मेडिकल हेल्थ और स्टेबलाइजेशन ऑफ लाइक इम्पेयरमेंट किसी भी चीज का लाइक like, स्टेबलाइजेशन होना बहुत जरूरी है हार्ट रेट ज्यादा हो रहा है आपका या आपको अपने डॉक्टर से एनुअल चेकअप्स ये सब बहुत जरूरी है इस एज में एनुअल चेकअप्स कराएं अपना और जरूरी भी नहीं है बहुत सारे लोग ये सोचते हैं कि अगर हम कराएंगे तो हमें बार बार जाना पड़ेगा एक बार आप अपना एक्सरसाइज प्रोटोकॉल ले लें एक बार अपना अपना मेडिसिन का चार्ट ले लें कि हाँ ये थ्री मंथ्स चलेंगे फोर मंथ्स चलेंगे नहीं जाना रोज रोज क्योंकि नाउ डेज एवरी वन इज वर्किंग उनको हॉस्पिटल ही लेके जाना एक चैलेंज रहता है कि अपने पेरेंट्स को या ग्रैंड पेरेंट्स को कैसे लेके जाएंगे क्योंकि सब बिजी हैं अपनी लाइफ में सो इट्स ओके कि कंसर्ट वन टाइम दान जो भी उनका टेक uh, केयर कर रहे हैं जो भी उनके साथ अटेंडेंट है उनसे कहें कि सीख लें समझ लें ताकि वो आगे घर पे कंटिन्यू करते रहें इट्स बेस्ट कि एक बार मिलके कंसल्ट करके उनके लिए जो भी बेस्ट है क्योंकि एवरी वन इज यूनिक तो सबके लिए एक यूनिक ही ट्रीटमेंट रहेगा तो उसके लिए बेस्ट पॉसिबल है कि आप आए एक बार मिल लें एक बार उनका चार्ट बनवा लें एक्सरसाइज का या डाइट का भी एक बार चार्ट बनवा लें देन यू फॉलो अप फॉर थ्री मंथ सिक्स मंथ ईयर और जो भी बेस्ट पॉसिबल वे हो उसके लिए आप बात करें देन मेजर इशूज जो अभी तक फॉलो अप कर रहे हैं दैट इज फॉल्स फॉल्स जो है थर्टी परसेंट ऑफ ओल्ड एज पीपल में है यूजली इट इज स्टेयर्स अभी ज्यादा जैसे जिनके घर पे हैं वो ध्यान से चले बाथरूम में कुछ ऐसे स्लीपरी मतलब टाइल्स वगैरह ना हो वो सब चीजें बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है जिसकी वजह से हम इसका रेशियो ये जो परसेंटेज है थर्टी परसेंट वी कैन रिड्यूस और ऑन जब भी फॉल होता है तो हिप फ्रैक्चर्स बहुत कॉमन हो जाते हैं क्योंकि यूजुअली इम्पैक्ट जो आता है जो फ्लोर से टच में आता है सरफेस से वो हमेशा हिप जॉइंट होता है एंड देन देर नीड्स वी नीड आर्थ्रोस्कोपी फॉर द सेम और वो ये एज ए फाइव सेट क्योंकि सबसे कॉन्टैक्ट में हिप आता है देन पेल्विस और फोर आम ऐसे कोने पे गिर जाते हैं तो रिजल्ट इनके फ्रैक्चर्स बहुत कॉमन होते हैं और रिमेंबर कि ओल्ड एज में रीजनरेशन पावर कम होती है तो माइंड पेन भी ज्यादा हो टाइम भी ज्यादा लगे मतलब उसको ठीक होने में और शायद समवन नीड्स लाइक सर्जरी फॉर द सेम सो इट्स ऑलवेज बेटर टू प्रिवेंट इट सो अल्टीमेटली क्या होता है जब वंस वन फॉल जो हर चीज की एक विशेष साइकिल चलती है तो एक बार गिरे थोड़ा सा फिर एक फेयर आ जाता है ओल्ड एज में कि हाँ गिर सकते हैं हम अकेले नहीं जा रहे तो क्या होता है कि अभी बेड से उठ के वॉशरूम में नहीं जा रहे कोई आ जाए उसके सामने जाएंगे तो इससे इमोबिलिटी भी बढ़ती है और जैसे आप यूरिन होल्ड कर रहे हैं तो उससे आपकी यूरिनरी उस पर इनकॉन्टिनेंस या कोई ऐसी प्रॉब्लम भी स्टार्ट हो सकती है एंड अल्टीमेटली लीड्स टू वीकनेस एंड आइसोलेशन ऑफ वन पर्सन आइसोलेशन लीड्स टू डिप्रेशन फिर वो डिप्रेशन से मस्कुलटल आपकी जॉइंट्स पे बोन्स पे मसल्स पे इफेक्ट पड़ेगा ये विशेष साइकिल चलती रहेगी तो इसलिए सबसे इम्पोर्टेंट चीज है छोटी चीजों का ध्यान रखें बड़ी वाली चीजें अपने आप अपने आप धीरे धीरे अब स्ट्रेटेजीज क्या क्या है जो हम रिस्क जितने भी फॉल रिस्क है उसको कैसे रिड्यूस कर सकें सबसे पहले विजुअल एम्पेमेंट अपना रिफ्लेक्शन चेकअप करवाएं अपने आई साइट के लिए जरूर जाएं 
अगर किसी को कैटरैक्ट है तो कैटरैक्ट इंस्ट्रक्शन इज इम्पॉर्टेंट एंड होम सेफ्टी असेसमेंट कि छोटे छोटे रग्स जैसे उनके अगर हमारे वो घर में मदर फादर को इतना एरिया में मोबाइल रहना है तो उनके नीचे छोटे छोटे रग्स ना हो कि उससे ट्रिपल मतलब उनके साथ टकरा के वो फॉल कर जाए या कोई भी ऐसी हिंड्रेंस बीच में ना हो तो उनके लिए मोबिलिटी वाला एरिया जो है वो फ्री रहे ऑडियो वेस्टिबुलर डिसफंक्शन अपना एयर बैग्स क्लियर करवा रहे हैं ऑडियोलॉजिकल इवेल्यूएशन करवाएं हियरिंग एज जो भी यूज कर रहे हैं पहने क्योंकि हमेशा एक बात याद रखिए आई साइट विजुअल हियरिंग एंड प्रॉपर रिसेप्शन तीन ऐसी चीज है दैट कीप्स योर बैलेंस प्रॉपर सो अगर आपका बैलेंस नहीं होगा तो ज्यादा चांसेस हैं आपकी फॉल्स होने के and habitual exercises i must tell you habitual exercises simple exercise which you can do or uh, like you can make your parents or your grandfathers do at home you just need to focus on two things matlab like aapko apni without movement of neck aapko eye ki movement karni hai that leads to like aapke brain ke andar aapka stimulus pahunchega and habitual exercises hum ise bolte hain usually bor vestibular ocular reflexes exercises so you can do it at home by using a two pants or just uh, focus on your nails thumb nails thumb ki nails pe ye aapne rakha apne samne thoda sa dur and just eye ball ki movement karke aapko dono thumb ko ye same way up and down sideways dono side aap easily aaram se kar sakte hain then strategies dysfunction jo hai vitamin b12 jaise sunne bataya hai food intake mein cervical spondylosis ki aapko karna hai balance exercises usually kya hota hai ki narrow base ho iske liye aapko family members ki bahut zarurat hai aap apne liye ek chhota sa matlab like narrow base of support mein stand karke eyes open eyes close kare kisi jaise unstable surface mein do se 3 minute khade hoye ye thodi si balance exercises that you are challenging your body your proper acceptance functions to like activate so always during this time keep your uh, keep one family member with you use appropriate walking aid ye bahut bada wo hai ki old age mein aake na log ghabrate hain ki yaar main agar ye lene chalunga wo kya kahega ye kya kahega if it is must to zarur le upar se correctly sized footwear with a firm sole ek achhi sole honi chahiye jisme height raised ho inner side pe wo bahut important hai आपके लिए क्योंकि क्या होता है कि जब आप विद एजिंग थोड़ा सा हमारा फ्लैट फीट की तरफ भी जाता है वेट के साथ साथ अगर हमारा प्रॉपर सोल होंगे और शू बिल्कुल सही होगा साइज तो जो शॉक एब्जॉर्बन है और वेट बियरिंग जॉइंट्स है ना वो नॉर्मली जो वेट लाइंस है हमारी वो सही नॉर्मल उस पर फॉल करेगी मस्कुलस कैलेटर डिसऑर्डर्स हो गए फुट डिसऑर्डर्स हो गए कोई भी डायबिटिक वालों को अपनी बहुत ज़्यादा केयर करने की जरूरत है एंड पॉस्ट्रल हाइपोटेंशन कभी भी ना जल्दी में ओल्ड एज पीपल के लिए ये टिप है कि अगर आप लेट के एकदम उठे नहीं खड़े ना पहले उठ के बैठे दो मिनट क्योंकि हमारी बॉडी को अडेप्ट करने में थोड़ा टाइम लगता है ब्लड सर्कुलेशन इंक्रीज होने के लिए एक नॉर्मल होने दीजिए देन कॉमन इम्पेयरमेंट्स होती हैं हमारे पास इन अर्थराइटिस अर्थराइटिस बहुत कॉमन है आप यूजली कोशिश करें कि एक नॉर्मल होम रेजिमेंट बना लें कि एटलीस्ट आपकी फंक्शनल इम्पेयरमेंट में ना जाए और अगर ग्रेड थ्री है या जो भी ऑस्ट्रियोथ्राइटिस का है किसी का भी है तो टॉक टू द लाइक ऑर्थोपेडिक कंसल्टेंट कि क्या फ़ायदा कि इतना पेन लेके हमेशा जी रहे अपनी क्वालिटी ऑफ लाइफ क्यों खराब करना है एक बार कांटेक्ट करें बात करें फ्रैक्चर्स कॉमन क्योंकि ऑस्ट्रोपोरोसिस ऑलवेज डू मैं ये कहूँगी लाइट जैसे खड़े हुए से और कुछ हाथ ऐसे रखा हल्का सा लेग मूवमेंट्स करे नेक मूवमेंट्स करे मतलब थोड़ा सा लाइट एक्सरसाइज ताकि आपकी बोन्स पे थोड़ा वेट जाता रहे लाइट वेट वेयरिंग एरोबिक एक्सरसाइज यूजली फॉर ऑस्ट्रोपोरोटिक और ऑस्ट्रोपोस टी बी आई ट्रोमेटिक ब्रेन इंजरीज मे बी ड्यू टू एक्सीडेंट लाइक फॉल स्ट्रिप्स बी पी पार्किसन डिजीज मैंने बहुत सारे अपने ओ पी डी में पेशेंट देखे हैं लोग कहते हैं कि इसका कोई इलाज नहीं है ठीक है इसका कोई इलाज नहीं है बट उस डिजीज की प्रोग्रेशन को तो हम फॉल्ट कर सकते हैं उनकी क्वालिटी ऑफ लाइफ तो इम्प्रूव कर सकते हैं उनके लिए बैलेंस जो उसके साथ सेकेंडरी कॉम्प्लिकेशन आ रही हैं हम उसको तो ठीक कर सकते हैं सो वी नीड टू टेक केयर ऑफ ऑल दीज थिंग विजुअल कोई भी इम्प्रूवमेंट हो प्लीज गो एंड चेक करें 
हेयरिंग लॉस एंड न्यूरोपैथी क्योंकि यूजुअली जो पेरिफेरल नर्व्स होती है वो इफेक्ट होती है वाइब्रेटरी सेंस टेम्परेचर पे ये सब हमारा सेंस कम हो जाता है सो गो फॉर एवरीथिंग चेकअप मस्ट अब होम सेफ्टी के लिए मैं सबसे इम्पोर्टेंट कहूँगी जो एलिवेटेड टॉयलेट सीट्स हैं वो अपने आजकल हर मार्केट में हर रूज में अवेलेबल हैं इवन द टॉयलेट सीट्स आर अवेलेबल फॉर जीडियाट्रिक पॉपुलेशन सो गो मस्ट बाय फॉर योर पेरेंट्स बाय फॉर योर ग्रैंड पेरेंट्स क्योंकि हमेशा क्या होता है फॉल्स यूजली वो उठ नहीं पाए ग्रैप हैंडल्स बास जो हैं वो नियर बाय जरूर लगाएं सो दैट उनके पास एक फॉर्म सपोर्ट हो उठने के लिए टाइल्स नहीं होने चाहिए कोई भी स्लिपरी वाले बाथरूम्स के अंदर नो नो स्किट फ्लोर मैट्स कभी भी जैसे वॉशरूम के बाहर हम यूजुअली मैट्स लगाते हैं वो ध्यान रखें कि कभी भी ऐसा ना हो कि आपको एकदम टकराएं और वो गिर जाए तो ये सारी चीजें होम सेफ्टी प्रोफाइल्स हैं दैट यू नीड लू अच्छा ये एडजस्टमेंट ऑफ हाइट डिस्टेंस फ्रॉम बटेला टू फ्लोर इज इम्पॉर्टेंट क्योंकि क्या होता है कभी हाइट बहुत ऊपर हो जाती है लेकिन आजकल सॉफ्ट वो आ रहे हैं इतने ऊंचे ऊंचे टेन इंचज के मैट्रेसेस और ये सब वो उसकी वजह से क्या होता है जब भी वो उठते हैं तो उनका पैर जो फुट होता है वो सरफेस पे टच नहीं होता चांसेस क्या होते हैं ज्यादातर स्लिप के या फॉल के तो ऑलवेज अगर कुछ भी किसी के घर में ऐसा है कि बहुत नीचे दबा हुआ है बहुत ऊपर है तो उसको एडजस्ट करें मैट्रेस को जहाँ पे भी वो बेड हाइट है ना उसको इस तरह से कि उनका पटेला जो है जहाँ उनके स्लीपिंग एरिया है वो पटेला टच हो जब भी वो खड़े तो उतनी हाइट रखिए थे कि अगर वो सोते सोते क्योंकि यूजली नाइट में यूरिनेशन के लिए उनको जाना ही पड़ता है तो उसके लिए एकदम रात में अंधेरे में और उनको जोर से आ रहा है तो उनको भाग के जाना पड़ा तो उसके लिए आपको एडजस्टमेंट बहुत जरूरी है और जो लो चेयर्स हैं काउचेस हैं उनको अगर इस एक तो मस्कुलर स्कैलेटर प्रॉब्लम है हमारी बोन्स जो हैं वो वीक हैं तो खड़े होने पे उनकी मसल्स पे और ओवरलोड होगा तो ऑलवेज ऑप्टिमम हाइट की चेयर्स या सोफास ये सब होने चाहिए और कुछ ऐसा स्टिक या उनके पास कुछ कि अगर उनको कुछ ऑब्जेक्ट्स उठाना है तो उनके रीच के अंदर आए या शेल्स बहुत ऊपर ना हो तो उनके लिए ये सारे आप थोड़ा सा आप खुद अपने घर के अंदर ये देखें और इनको थोड़ी सी चेंज करें थैंक यू और एक बात किसी अच्छे उसने प्रोफेशनल टेनिस प्लेयर ने कही है वाई आर पीपल आर फ्रेड ऑफ गेटिंग ओल्ड यू फील वाइजर यू फील मोर मेच्योर यू फील लाइक यू नो योर सेल्फ बेटर You would trade that uh, for softer skin, not me. So हमेशा याद रखें ठीक है it's a normal aging process. ये है ये physiological changes है अब इस चीज में हमें adapt करना है हमें जो छोटी चीजें हैं एक तो tension नहीं लेनी देखिए बहुत सारी हमारी जो social responsibilities होती है ना by age of 60 वो भी कम हो जाती है क्योंकि हम पे बहुत ज्यादा किसी की फिक्र या अभी कैसे चलना है फाइनेंशियल इश्यूज ये सब हमारे पे नहीं होते उन लोगों पे नहीं होते जो 60 इयर्स से अबाउट तो ठीक है वो जो न्यू सोशल रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटीज हैं ग्रैंड चिल्ड्रन की टेक केयर या अपने आप की टेक केयर ना उसके अंदर एकोमोडेट होना बहुत जरूरी थैंक यू सो मच सो वी हैव फ्यू क्वेश्चन विद अस वन ऑफ द क्वेश्चन इज व्हाट ऑल थिंग्स आई कैन ऐड इन डाइट ऑफ माय ओल्ड एज पेरेंट्स फॉर रिड्यूसिंग फटी एंड मसल इट्स सो many things we have already discussed but i'll just repeat them again first of all we should take lots of proteins in vitamin d vitamin d in food products is usually not available and we don't have fortified vitamin d milk in our country so uh, what else we can do if we can have a little bit of vitamin d is there a little bit in mushrooms and vegetables and milk we should take them and eggs you can take so eggs is a very good for fatigue and muscle ache the main of the problem detection is very important what is the cause the deficiencies is a cause but there can be because of the muscle weakness or there might be some injury in some part of the body or in the ligament in the tendon so you should get in yourself checked with the doctor once and then you can uh, start taking these vitamins these will overall help calcium is there and uh, for in calcium you have to take milk even if you are not some people are in old age are not able to digest milk so then they can take curd they can take lassi chaat so any product paneer is very also very good so that will also re, uh, lead to strong muscles and strong bones and fatigue and muscle aches can be and there are lot of deficiencies of uh, deficiency of uh, minerals and uh, micro uh, uh, um, minerals so those like uh, we have uh, uh, magnesium is deficient so that can also cause lot of fatigue 
uh, anybody would like to add something? Uh, as Naiti said, minerals, uh, the most common reason for fatigue is sodium and potassium deficiency, also magnesium and selenium deficiency. Uh, these are transient terms, but these are essentially minerals which are available in fruits, available in vegetables. So a normal Indian diet is actually rich in uh, minerals. What we normally uh, avoid is proteins. As Dr. Yashika rightly said, is that you should have diet rich in proteins. We think that proteins are not digesting, so we don't give them. Okay, but simple things, just egg white oil. Okay, that's very rich in proteins, very easily digestible. Now give it to you. And if you think that minerals are being lost, then simply give it to you. Okay, that's very rich in proteins. Right, that has vitamin C. If you add rock salt, it becomes rich in potassium, rich in sodium. If you add this, that helps a lot. Same way, psychological health is important because sometimes there is a stress or tension can also cause a muscle pain and people feel lethargic after that. So you need to take care, you need to involve, you need to have even a good spiritual mind also. Like everything should be balanced, diet, physical activity and your like emotional well-being. So these three components should uh, are interconnected with each other. If there is like psychological stress, so So basically everything is connected. So one must be take care of food, physical activity and the psych emotional well-being of the patient or old age people. Okay, thank you. You can take the next question. What do about supplements? In what should we need? What should we do about sleepy sleeplessness in old age? Okay, so usually sleeplessness uh, happens in old age because कि उनकी physical जो demand है वो slower down हो जाती है. So उसके लिए we have like uh, uh, even in some apps, some uh, like YouTube's also we have like uh, uh, alpha wave binaural music. So before sleeping, just ask them to listen to those uh, music for 5 to 10 minutes. These are just beats for us. So it uh, releases the hormones in our body. Relaxation hormone, this certain uh, like endorphins also releases that in our body. And it induces the sleep, uh, sleep cycle. If, uh, with this, uh, some kind of postures also uh, like uh, induces the sleep, like lying down in so fine position and just like uh, cross, uh, touching your foot in this way and just move your uh, the knee up and down for four to five times and then relax in that same uh, position for three to two, uh, four minutes and it will help you to induce your sleep as well. Like a butterfly to Yeah, you know, a butterfly. Uh, one more thing regarding sleeplessness is, is that it is actually seen in all ages, but more in old ages is the use of uh, sorry, exposure to screens. Suppose if, if you are watching TV, Right, and suddenly you close your TV and think that I'll go to sleep. Then that normally doesn't happen. Right, or you check your cell phone. Right, the moment the LED uh, uh, goes on, right, your mind gets activated. So to sleep, you have to avoid any sensory input. So no hearing, no uh, uh, seeing something. Right, the moment you see a bright screen, your mind gets activated as if you are. Uh, it, it goes in alert mode. So of course you won't be able to sleep immediately after that. So that is something I've seen many elderly and I simply ask them, right, do you check your WhatsApp before sleeping? And believe me, majority of time the answer is yes, I do check my WhatsApp before sleeping, right? And I say, okay, that is the cause why you're not able to sleep. So I would just like to add like uh, what we have discussed is that we should all have a sleep curriculum or a practice at night before going to the sleep. So this is all included in that. Uh, like when what time you have to go to sleep before that 10 15 minutes before wash your face wash your legs change your clothes get into a comfortable attire you can even put on a soft music and a light, small dim light in elderly we will all suggest all of us i think will agree that there should be a light in the room the toilet doors should not be closed and the comfortable footwear will be there should be there because they should not fall so because most of the elderly in my house also they want the lights should be totally off but even if not in the room in the bathroom some light should be open so and before sleeping like you are listening to the music you can take a book if you are not able to sleep you read a book and most of the time what i have seen most of the people have some bubble issues that is the reason they are not able to sleep so please uh, correct your bubble issues and exercise a little bit that will help you to induce sleep. i think the last question is especially for dr gaurav only right uh, coming to whether knee replacement is indicated after 85 years of age 
Now, I'll just put it in perspective. A lot of studies about uh, undergoing knee replacement in elderly that's more than 80 years old. The study says that uh, you have a higher chance of complications after 80 years of age. Uh, irrespective of the age, what basically uh, is determined, uh, what determines whether you can undergo knee replacement or not is how physically active you are. See, if I am a 75 year old, I am more even, I have kidney problems, I am diabetic, I am mostly obese, then yes, knee replacement is not a surgery for me. But if I am a very fit and active 85 year old who is not having any medical problem or just simple BP etc. But if I am having pain in my knee and previously also I was walking kilometers and kilometers, then yes, I will benefit uh, from knee replacement. What literature currently says is that in case you are 80 years and above and you are undergoing knee replacement, then you should undergo one knee replacement at a time, right? So uh, normally we do, we replace both the knees at the same time, but there's a very clear cut literature, a guideline from NICE, that's a National Institute of Clinical Excellence in England, which clearly mentioned that you have to replace knees one by one after once you have a patient who is more than 80 years old, right? So if you're asking, can I uh, uh, ask my parents to have their knee replaced, they are 85 years old, then I'll simply answer that depends upon their fitness. If they are fit, if they are able to do their household chores themselves, if they are independent, then yes, you can go ahead with knee replacement, but it will be one knee at a time. If they are frail, if they have a lot of medical problems, right, if, uh, besides knee, they also have issues in their back, issues in, uh, with their heart, issues with their lungs, then uh, we should avoid having knee replaced. Uh, I would like to ask uh, Dr. Gaurav one thing because many of the my patients also ask me this question ki after knee replacement what is the way matha, how can they get back to the normal life and how much days they will be starting to walk and how much days they will be uh, can walk much better and uh, what is the matha, because of the old, because many old people are very scared whether they should go for it or not go for it. I mean that fear is always there and yeah. uh, it takes us hours and hours of counselling and if the relatives they do counsel uh, their parents or their, their relatives a lot that okay right now the time you have been eating painkillers for so long right kindly get the knee replaced but many people are afraid. Yeah. So the answer is that you have to understand it is a major surgery right. It's not something which, which we are doing in a, in a matter of minutes and Right, uh, it's, it's a very it's an invasive procedure. It's a major surgery. It has its own recovery times. If you've been having knees which have been deformed bad for 15 years, then do not uh, I mean uh, expect you to be all right in a matter of few days. Right after knee replacement, you are allowed to walk. That's that's the beauty of it. You can put full weight on it and you can walk on it. Right. Uh, uh, normally we allow walking after the next day. On. Next day. Right, but there are there's a dash protocol now which says that you start walking immediately after the surgery. Well, I mean the moment your the affected spinal seizure wears off four hours, and so you are walking right on the day of the surgery, right? Immediately uh, after four uh, four to five hours of surgery, so you can be a bit, but yes, you will need walker. Right, to replace the knee, we have to go through the main mother muscle of the knee, which is your quadriceps, that is extensor muscles. So that muscle takes time to recover, right? So initially you will be walking only with the help of walker, right? Yes, you will have some difficulties, but we do have a, a very good team of physiotherapists to help you uh, go through that recovery period. And uh, we expect you to get rid of walker in six weeks of time. Some people do get rid of walker much earlier. In three to four weeks, some people take a bit longer, right? What is more important is your muscle strength. The stronger the muscles are, the merrier it is, right? If you are having very strong muscles, then you will recover very fast after knee replacement. So that is what, that's the role of pre-operative physiotherapy, pre-operative exercises. Right? If you are somebody who is having deformed knees, very weak muscles, then probably knee replacement would reap its benefits in some uh, say six to eight months. On an average, it's three months. That is the time which we say that uh, majority of people they, they become all right after knee replacement. One thing you have to understand is knee replacement is, is a very fruitful procedure. But it brings down your pain from a score of 10 out of 10 to say 2 out of 10 or 1 out of 10. You do feel a bit of aches and uh, slight uh, heaviness in your knee, right? Sometimes your knee might pain, but majority of people are happy with it, right? So, and physiotherapy should be continued for how long? For at least one month. And if the people have weak muscles, they will? Only with each other all exercise. The thing, the moment, usually patients thought that our relative had done surgery, 
उसका दस दिन में ठीक हो गया पंद्रह दिन में मतलब हर किसी की बॉडी मसल स्ट्रेंथ बोन डेंसिटी अलग होती है तो सबसे इम्पोर्टेंट चीज है कि एक किसी भी पेशेंट को अपने माइंड से ये चीज दिखाना बहुत जरूरी है कि उसकी इतनी जल्दी ठीक हो गई या उसका इतना मतलब पेन नहीं हुआ ये बहुत सारे लोग यही क्वेश्चन लेके आते हैं कि उसका तो मेरी उसने कराया था दस दिन में ठीक हो गया चल पाए तो हर किसी की बॉडी मसल मास देखिए जो बेस्ट है थ्री मंथस का प्रोटोकॉल एक एक टाइम लिमिट देते हैं कि उसके अंदर बेटर होने के चांसेस बहुत अच्छे हैं डॉक्टर नीज सर्जरी वॉट ऑल थिंग्स दे कैन नॉट डू फॉर एवर इन लाइफ I mean, current, there's, no, there's no current dictum as that what you cannot do, right? You have to just understand the knee replacement or the knee implant. It's just like a car, right? It's made of machine. It's made of steel and plastic. So I mean, it, uh, the life of my car depends on the way I'm driving. Suppose if I drive very fast, sudden brakes, fast, sudden brakes, then my car will wear off in six to seven years. But if I take care of that car, right? If I if I'm not driving it uh, in a rash manner, then my car would easily last 15 years, 20 years. The same thing happens with the knee. If you squat, squatting is possible, right? Even after knee replacement, and the current implants are very well designed to allow you to squat. So squatting is possible. But the moment you squat, you're putting a lot of load on that artificial knee. So all the forces that made your natural knee uh, undergo wear and tear. those forces will also cause the your artificial knees to undergo wear and tear so the moving squat and every time you squat and you getting up and you placing a lot of load on that thing so yes your knee would wear and tear much earlier than if you would have not been squatting so that is why we simply advise them that if you can avoid squatting then that's very good but if you have to squat suppose aap puja mein gaye hain take aur baithna pad raha hai niche take aap ek baar baith sakte hain बट रोज आपको नहीं बैठना है आपको अपना टॉयलेट चेंज करना पड़ेगा अगर घर में इंडियन कमोड है यू हैव टू यूज वेस्टर्न कमोड बिकॉज आपका डेली स्पॉटिंग वाला जो रिक्वायरमेंट है वो कम हो जाएगा सो so, ये चीज होती है अब रनिंग क्यों पर आते हैं हमारे पास ऑनेस्टली स्पीकिंग ऐसे लोग आते हैं जो कि क्वेश्चन पूछते हैं दैट आई वॉज आई लव रनिंग एंड आई वॉन्ट टू गो बैक टू माई पैशन ऑफ रनिंग आंसर इज येस यू कैन डॉट ऑन रिप्लेसमेंट बट अगेन द मूवमेंट यू रन यू पोटिंग लॉट ऑफ रोड ऑन दो राइट हम ये बोलते हैं कि ये सर गारंटी थोड़ा जल्दी होएगा बट बाकी आप भाग सकते हैं ऐसे भी पेशेंट्स हैं जो कि वो एक्चुअली वन ऑन ट्रेकिंग ट्रिप्स एंड दे हैव कम बैक फ्रॉम एरियाज लाइक ट्राइवल एंड अदर ब्यूटीफुल प्लेसेस राइट आफ्टर हैविंग देयर रीड प्लेस दे वर नॉट एबल टू डू इट फॉर अ वेरी लॉन्ग टाइम सो दे वर मिसिंग इट दो अमरनाथ भी यात्रा करके आते हैं वन क्वेश्चन इज देयर माय मदर इज इन लॉ इज डायबिटिक एंड हर किडनी इज आल्सो जस्ट 40% वर्किंग शी इज 70 overweight uh, can you suggest some diet plan for her like we can see that there are two conditions the patient has diabetes and then the uh, she has uh, kidney problems so with diabetes obviously she needs a lot of uh, to take care of her diabetes and she should take a diabetic diet and that also i we have not mentioned whether she is on medication or on insulin if she is on insulin then she needs medication along with the diet chart and uh, uh, diabetic diet along with kidney disease i think she should meet a dietitian to take a proper diet chart and if her diabetes is no and she's overweight this she to overweight she has to lose weight to get corrected her diabetes because ultimately uh, even if you are overweight and you are taking proper care of your diet but you are not able to lose weight there is no use and your diabetes will not get corrected diabetes can be cured everybody should understand if you lose weight if we go back to our bmi you are almost your diabetes is 80 to 90% cured it is not a disease which will stay with you but it may be at an age of 70 it will be very difficult for us to treat her for that and ask to, to change her dietary habit but if she is motivated and you can do and with the kidney i think uh, few protein high protein diet cannot be given if she has uh, uric acid is high and uh, uh, few uh, kidney related all what that we should avoid uh, i mean uh, so main kidney is is the main place where your uh, blood gets filtered so Uh, salt is something which your kidney has to handle a lot. So if you are actually a salt lover, then that is something which you have to stop. Right? It is said that you should not eat added salt. So doctor, sabji me jitna namak hota hai, har sabji ke andar ek ek fixed amount of namak hota hai. That should be enough. Right? If you are having kidney problems, you should not uh, put added salt into it. That is uh, important. Right? You have to avoid uh, foods which are, uh, I mean, uh, which suddenly release lot of salt in the body, like. Uh, Uh, banana is one food which has lot of potassium right and it can lead to potassium overload so yes that is something 
but uh, my recommendation my general advice for you is that if she is having so much problem then she should have a proper diet plan charted down and for that a dietitian would be a better person right? one thing i would like to add on this thing lots of my old patients and they they have hypertension they are taking senda namak please senda namak is very rich in potassium they have stopped taking normal salt and their potassium is increasing please stop stop do uh, get rid of that habit take normal salt in less amount if you are want to have something on salad you can put a senda namak on that but don't make senda namak your staple diet i think many of the patients are doing this wrongly so we should avoid doing that one last question i think we can take if we have time yeah one last question is from my side to dr gorav only ki i i have lots of patients who have uh, weak bones after the age of 60 and so one thing i would like to know ki for them the bone densitometry when they should be done and uh, what all medication like i i usually give calcium and vitamin d phosphates also i give but uh, there are some uh, injectables are required in phosphates sometimes when they are very low so how to detect it and when they should come for bone densitometry and when that patient to, should come to you directly for a treatment so basically uh, they say the prevention is better than cure getting bone densitometry is more a modality of pre- uh, prevention now uh, the guideline says that in women the moment you have your menopause right you should get your bone density tested not during the time you are having your menopause once you are over with that right so that is mostly like 50 51 years old right get your uh, bone density done in men the guideline says 65 years so 65 years is the age where men should have their bone density tested right and uh, that is prevention okay but if you are having recurrent fractures right uh, the some countries like singapore for every patient who ends up having a hip fracture they will test the bone density so they made it mandatory right so it depends on, on uh, hospital to hospital on countries to countries right so uh, but prevention uh, for the purpose of prevention get your bone density checked if, when you are 50 51 years old when if you are a woman the moment you have your menopause in case you have a premature menopause you can even get a bone density check uh, before that right in men it's 65 years any so, family history in which you should get your bone density early then yes uh, it's not just bone density metry that will support a proper bone screening procedure there are conditions mm. rare conditions like osteogenesis and protracta where you end up having recurrent fractures in case you are having repeated fractures and fractures by a trivial trauma like you just say the jerk by right? you just put your hand on the table and you broke your wrist so that's a trivial trauma when right? you didn't fall actually so in case you are having a uh, systemic fractures because it's a trivial trauma then you have to get a bone density check right there are a lot of uh, genetic uh, conditions where your bone density will be low but then the incidence of that is so rare so that uh, that's why these guidelines say that there is an age uh, parameter we have to remember the most common cause of osteoporosis is actually menopause which is a physiological process and then next most common is senile that is aging so again a physiological process so these both causes are uh, the most common cause of osteoporosis yes if you are having recurrent fractures if you have family history of recurrent fractures mom or dad had recurrent fractures or uh, so like uh, then you can get your bone density checked the moment you become skeletally mature that means by age of 20 21 years if you are very strong family history only uh, at that time and dr varu what is your take on taking calcium regularly after menopause because many of my patients say ki my doctor has said that i will have uh, kidney stones if i take calcium I mean, but my take is that they should take calcium because diet will not supplement with them with the adequate amount so well uh, the reason for having uh, stones if you take uh, rich calcium is vitamin d deficiency mm. so what happens is that if you are rich in vitamin d then the moment you take a calcium it will be absorbed from your stomach so that's the role of vitamin d and vitamin d will simply take the calcium and put it in the bone right conversely if you are deficient in vitamin d right you will take calcium most of it will uh, won't be absorbed and will pass in your feces some that is absorbed will not be able to go into your bone because you're not having vitamin d so what happens this calcium is then passed via your kidneys in the urine so when you have high concentration of calcium in the urine plus if you are dehydrated if you do not have a habit of drinking lot of water then this calcium gets concentrated and you form stones so culprit is not a calcium tablet right culprit is a fact that you are deficient in vitamin d so uh, you have that's why uh, all the screening procedures now all the health checks now they insist on getting a vitamin d and vitamin b pulse check that's that's the role so the old ladies who are most to puzzle they should take calcium regularly 
Uh, yes, uh, for calcium, the dictum is a uh, two months, one month rule. That means you, have, you don't have to take calcium indefinitely, regularly. Take it for two months, leave for one month. Then take it for two months, leave for one month. But yes, calcium you have to take it uh, if your diet is not rich in calcium. Mm. Well, lots of patients are like we. I think we do remember one of the patient who was taking phosphates for a long time, and you told me that she will have brittle bones. Right. So I think uh, the doc patients who are at home and taking the same medication for last one to two years, they should visit doctor and just update their uh, prescription whether they should keep on taking them or not. The problem in treating osteoporosis is that all the medication which we have in the market for treating osteoporosis, you cannot take them indefinitely. Bisphosphonates, what Dr. Yachika is talking about, are those tablets which are taking once in a week or once in a month, like your doctor advice you so. Uh, the moment you take them for a duration more than two years, they can actually end up damaging your bone. Uh, see, uh, bone construction and disruption is something which, which keeps on happening. And that is not, the bone destruction is not bad. That is important for remodeling, right? So once a new bone is formed, Right, with time this bone will age and with what body does is the body destroys that aged bone and then deposits new bone in that. What these tablets, all these medicines for osteoporosis they do is they remove the body's uh, ability to destroy that bone. So there is a mechanism in our body which are uh, responsible for destroying those bones. Now what happens is that when you remove that mechanism, uh, these medicines will suppress the bone destruction mechanism. Then the bone which was formed say five years ago, six years ago, now becomes aged and will soon crumple under stress. So you end up actually having fragility fractures. And the problem with these is these fractures are very nasty to treat, very difficult to treat. They have higher chances of not uniting despite the fact you might operate on them, you might put bone grafts. So that is why we simply we, uh, advise all our patients uh, who take this phosphonase to not take them more than two, uh, uh, for more than two years. Now coming to injection thing, you would have heard about injection that uh, my doctors advise me injections uh, which I have to inject myself to increase my bone density. Those injections are expensive, they cost me around 6-7 thousand rupees a month. Right? Again the same thing with that, right? those injections are teriprotide injections, they are again for bones uh, to increase the bone density. But again you cannot take them for more than 2 years because there are studies that uh, continuous administration of teriprotide can lead to a kind of bone cancer. So, but then there are theoretical studies. Till now, there has been no case report of somebody having bone cancer because of teriprotide administration on a long basis. But there are a lot of theoretical reports about that. So that is why we simply uh, ask you uh, to uh, not take them. Now, another thing you would have heard is nasal sprays, right? So a lot of people advise nasal spray uh, to take, and for long term, again, the limit for a nasal spray is around 6 to 8 months. You cannot take it for more than 6 to 8 months because it decreases the blood supply of your nose. So, in the nose, you have a bridge called as nasal septum. So, continuous take of calcine, uh, sorry, calcitonin nasal spray can actually lead to these septal perforations. So, again, we are uh, uh, not to take it for more than 6 to 8 months. So, and uh, those who are having very severe osteoporosis, they are advised uh, anabolic steroids, uh, which are which are uh, returning. Uh, so anabolic steroids are first introduced for treatment of osteoporosis. They initially became very popular. Then they had these problems with the heart. Uh, so, uh, but we do give them, and for very elderly patients, they actually are much safer than bisphosphonates and teriprotide injections, and they are much cheaper than uh, either of these. Right, but again, you cannot give them. Uh, you cannot give more than ten injections in a span of around fourteen to eighteen weeks. So all these medicines, they have their own limits, right? They are not free of side effects. That is why prevention is better than cure. That is why exercise. Right? That is why take a good diet. Exercise properly. So depend on your daughter-in-law's or. Or uh, some to, to do things, right? Just get a have a habit of doing your things yourself. Also. That is very important to have healthy bones and good bones. Thank you, Dr. Gaurav. You have enlightened me. I can pictureize everything right. very well. Afia, just we'll end with the last question. Afia, can you just tell the old people which exercises they can do at home of and specify the bone which is important in that area? Actually, the thing is usually uh, for old age people, we don't need to mother, like have a uh, high impact aerobic exercises or strength training. 
we just want our old age people to be healthy functionally independent we need to be uh, like functionally independent for so this you can go for a light walk for 10 minutes in morning 10 minutes in. just a light walk taking care of your gait pattern because usually uh, if the uh, gait pattern altered in old age so one should take care of the gait pattern walking straight with a proper base of support and uh, like uh, with a proper swinging of arms and one should take care because with aging the lower uh, uh, like lower body muscle strength decreases because of the like uh, bone uh, bone uh, mineral loss and even over like stress on the muscles on the lower leg muscles so one need to take care of uh, doing light exercises if one has like uh, hypertension problem no one will go for isometric exercise for lower leg because it increases the pressure on the heart so one should take care for that just light movement exercises including the large muscle group like if one can do mini squatting or like sitting and like taking the knee up to the chest including all the large major major muscle group you can do make the every joint mobile flexible and then you can uh, like have a strength which is for your functional movement or day to day activity that you don't feel any fatigue or over stress on the muscles thank you everyone